Not too long ago, I did a video all about the AI is stealing copyrighted material debate and all of my thoughts about that. But what if I were to tell you that I don't think this debate is going to be important for very much longer? There are five reasons why I don't think that the AI is stealing debate is going to be that relevant for much longer. Number one is because of this little thing called synthetic training data. There are companies like NVIDIA, which have created AI models specifically designed to generate more training data for other models, particularly for smaller models that might not have the resources to gather all of the training data sets that they need to train a huge model. Now they have synthetic data that allows them to do it much easier. But you may be wondering about this little thing called AI model collapse. You see, there's this theory that if an AI is trained on material generated by AI, that it will eventually degrade more and more and more because just the quality isn't there, right? And that is true of certain types of training data. Like if I were to just generate a whole bunch of stuff with AI, never modify it myself, never improve upon it, and I'm just making it for myself, you know, making books, making articles, that sort of thing, that data, if I was not putting any kind of human input into it and that was fed back into the AI and that cycle repeated itself over and over, then newer AI models would have an issue with that. However, it becomes a totally different thing when the AI model itself is trained to create training data. Training data is structured a little bit differently than you might expect. If you actually go look at a piece of training data, like an actual data set that people have used, it's usually like small snippets and things like that with instructions. It's not just a huge pile of text with no explanation or anything like that. That's just not how it works. And so when you have a model specifically designed to create that type of data, it doesn't actually lead to the same degradation over time. And so these companies like NVIDIA are able to create synthetic data to take care of 90% of all of the data needs that an AI model would need. And it's all produced synthetically and in a way that avoids the AI model collapse theory. And doing this will significantly reduce the reliance that any AI model trainer would need to have on existing copyrighted data. The second reason why I think the stealing argument is not gonna last much long is the fact that we're already seeing without government intervention, a certain amount of licensing of this copyrighted material. There are some people that say that in order to license all of the material that they would need for a training data set, a company would basically go bankrupt because it would be so much money to account for all of that data. And first of all, with the synthetic training data, that is no longer true. You can do 90% synthetic and then maybe a little bit of extra human created input on the top to do the fine tuning and things like that. And we're already seeing companies like Reddit and News Corp and many others start to make licensing deals deals with these big companies like OpenAI and Google and Anthropic and so forth, because a lot of these written word companies are hurting for money and realizing that this can be another revenue source for them. This is particularly true of news corporations and things like that, that have been slowly dying for the last 20 years. This is yet another way for them to get some income. And I think we'll see the same thing start to happen with traditional publishers in the near future, licensing deals with these companies, at least as far as their rights and their contracts with the authors are permitting them to do, which at the moment, because AI was not a thing, is nothing. Like they can do whatever they want on some of these things. Now it's going to cause a lot of author uproar if the traditional publishers were to do this. So I imagine there would be something in the contracts that would allow for an author to opt in or opt out. But I am confident that we'll see it in the future because traditional publishing is another industry that has been slowly dying over the last 20 years. So they're going to want to look at that additional sources of revenue. Right now, as far as I know, there's no widespread way of self-published authors like myself or individual artists to get compensated to use their work for training data. I am aware of one or two startups that are trying to do this, but whether or not any of them is working and their publishing model is working is still unclear. I will make sure to keep you up to date on this particular subject, but I do think it's a matter of time before we start to see legitimate avenues to license our data to a different company so that it's crystal clear from a legal and ethical standpoint that they have permission to use that work. So the bottom line, I don't think that the government is actually 
actually going to need to intervene here. I think the natural order of economics is going to eventually get us there, although there may need to be some fighting that we have to do in order to get proper compensation that is deserved and that these companies can afford. But like I said, with the synthetic training data, they might not actually need our data as much as we think they might. The third reason is ethical training methods. And what I mean by this is there are actually people out there trying to legitimately gather sources of information and material that everybody has legal rights to and clearly have legal rights to, such as public domain content and Creative Commons content and stuff like that. You'd be surprised at the amount of Creative Commons content out there and what you could do with it. For instance, there's a training data set called the Common Corpus that is doing basically assembling everything that it can obviously have the rights to, everything that's public domain, everything that's Creative Commons, Creative Commons YouTube videos, for example. And there's actually quite a bit of training data in there. Additionally, you have some companies like Adobe trying their best, although I know there are some legal wrinkles with Adobe, but as far as I know, they're one of the people doing this the best, where they are training their data specifically on images that they clearly have rights to. So the Adobe stock images, they're not going and scraping the internet. They're not doing a whole lot of things that a lot of other companies are doing. So especially for these big companies where they have access to a lot of data, there is definitely evidence that you can create an AI model of some kind that is not trained on any kind of copyrighted material that they clearly did not have permission to use. And again, whether that's legal or not is another debate in that I went into in my last video. But number four is the idea of just general improvements in the technology behind these large language models and art models and all of that. One argument that the anti-AI authors will use a lot of the time is this idea that eventually the AI is going to run out of material to train. And it turns out this is true. And Sam Altman has even said that large language models were pretty much dead and that there is a limit to the amount of training data that they have. But when you add in some factors like the synthetic training data, which is going to go a long way, and also the fact that the technology behind these large language models are just getting better with, despite the lack of new training data. A lot of it is just improving the systems and the technology behind the large language model so that you can do more with less. A good example of this in recent months was the release of the model GPT-4.0. That model had very little additional training of it compared to the predecessor GPT-4. And yet that model was way better than GPT-4 in a lot of ways, especially in math and reasoning, and just in general, a much better model and much cheaper. And so the training data really is only one tiny part of what makes a good large language model. As we make these models smarter and better, they're gonna be able to learn more from less material. The fifth and final reason why I think that the AI is stealing debate is not going to last very long is this idea that LLMs are becoming much more widespread and accessible to anybody. In the near future, it will probably be possible for just about anybody to train a model or at least fine tune a model to the point where it can do anything that they want it to. They could be trained for any specific task. And this will be something that you and I would be able to do in our mother's basement. You know, like this idea that as long as you have a powerful enough machine, in the near future, it will be possible for you to just create your own large language models or at the very least fine tune an existing large language model. And what this means is that anybody can take work of a copyrighted material, train a large language model on it without anybody being none the wiser. They might use it just for their own personal needs or what have you. But the point is it might not get out at all that all of these people are training their models on a specific data set. It's already possible even to create fine tuned models through OpenAI of existing author's work. I could, in theory, take the work of my favorite author, say Brandon Sanderson, and I could train a fine tuned model on Brandon Sanderson's work, and then I could have a model that is much better at writing in the style of Brandon Sanderson. That is 100% possible and 100% doable right now today. And yet nobody would really know that I have done this, and if I produced any work with this fine-tuned model, it wouldn't really be something that you could bring to me in court because you can't copyright a style, right? Not only can you not copyright a style, but you probably wouldn't be able to tell that I was writing Brandon Sanderson's style, mostly because Brandon Sanderson's style is not particularly 
particularly recognizable compared to some other authors like, say, H.P. Lovecraft or Terry Pratchett or someone like that. Douglas Adams, you know, they have some unique voices. Brandon Sanderson doesn't. You get what I'm saying, right? And this decentralization of AI training will make it nearly impossible for the government or any kind of governing body to really enforce any laws against using copyrighted data in the training data set. And so because of this, the focus will likely shift so that the focus will be less on the copyrighted data in the training data set and more on the actual output that people are creating. So for instance, I can use any AI generator to create an image of Mickey Mouse or Batman or something like that, but I can't sell that data because then, you know, these companies would come after me. That's because they're enforcing the final product, not the training data set. You don't see Disney or any of these big companies going after Midjourney and these AI companies because they know it would be futile, but they will go after you if you are producing any kind of t-shirts with Pikachu on them because I can't do that. I'm not a licensee of Pikachu. You. And so what this means is that you need to make sure that you are not plagiarizing anybody, that you are making sure to use these tools ethically as a productivity assistant for yourself, not in a way to try and copy what somebody else has done or directly use plagiarized material, like using the LLM to produce plagiarized material, which as I've established in a previous video, is not actually very easy to do. It'd be much easier to just go out there and just plagiarize the book, right? Using an LLM to plagiarize is much harder. But there are going to be instances where people might just take an existing book and say, rewrite it to say, you know, change all the names to these names, rewrite the text so it's not detectable by a plagiarism detector. And yeah, that might be an issue. And that's the kind of thing that I think we'll see more of the governments out there enforcing so that those kind of things can't happen. We're already seeing some large language models take steps in this direction. So it's going to become harder and harder to do that kind of direct plagiarizing. But again, the decentralization of AI training data sets is gonna make enforcing any kind of laws against AI to be very, very difficult as long as the output is not recognizable as something that is clearly under a copyright or a trademark. And those are the five reasons why I don't think that the AI is stealing debate is going to be an issue for much longer. Let me know in your comments if there's anything I missed or if you have an issue with anything that I said. I'm happy to have a civil, make sure it's civil conversation in the comments below. But if you like this and you didn't catch my video before going into the copyright debate and looking at fair use and all of that, be sure to check that video out because I go much more in depth in that video and I'll see you in the next one. <clears throat> Excuse me. The third... <clears throat> Can't talk today. I just lost my train of thought.